Bishop cries about all these friends abandoning him. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. Yeah, so Brendan's continuing this thing about wanting everybody to fucking be there when everyone got cancelled. It's weird, weird rant. Let's just play the rant because you know what the rant is, right? It basically said when everyone got cancelled, he was surprised that the comedy community he didn't all rally around him and his cancelled friends because of, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Fucking bizarre. Let's just play the thing anyway so you see what I'm talking about. British were crying about the lack of community in the comedy scene. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, let's play this clip. Couldn't bear to be sitting on the bench in life. You know what I didn't realize, though? Because in sports, I didn't have this. Like in the UFC, I didn't have this because it's pretty black and white. But in stand-up, I thought – I didn't realize the hate I'd get. Does that make sense? From the opportunities. Like to me – Now, I personally think this is insane to say – because the hate he got from the opportunity should have been very clear and evident why that hate would exist. Because nobody since him has ever been given a Showtime special or a comedy special as fast as he did. And why did he get his opportunity so fast? Because of his association with Rogan. And because if you look at it from the long game, Showtime were always going to head down the combat sports way in terms of mma and ufc and all that malarkey and they wanted somebody like a brendan who was obviously a former professional in that sport who was also close associated with rogan friends with him rogan's obviously part of the ufc that tie-in made sense business-wise for showtime whoever doing that deal was a smart cookie they knew what they were doing it's just unfortunate they're betted on the wrong horse in terms of brendan because you know he's a bit of a redact didn't do necessary homework didn't put enough effort in below the belt was one of the worst shows he's ever done and shut up we paying him a probably a fat check every month for all that and he obviously then towards the end was obviously let go or his country didn't get renewed he gave it to luke thomas but i feel like he should have understood the hate he got because the opportunity he got was only because he was friends with rogan like, yes, I understand that. Like, yes, to come to, at least now at this age, you can't be deluding yourself to think it's because of how hard you're working on T5K. That's why you got the chance to be a Showtime. Showtime opportunity came specifically because of, you know, the relationship you had with Rogan, partly because of what you did with the Fire and the Kid, but all of that stuff combined. That's what basically led to that opportunity. And most comedians before that, if you think about it, comedy podcasts weren't as popping as they are now. They all had to kind of perform and audition to get comedy specials they had to go for just for laughs and all this sort of shit to get specials and it was never guaranteed so someone like him jumping the queue should have always elicited feelings of hate and jealousy and envy and whatever because he's terrible at comedy and he jumped the queue and everybody else has to bust their ass doing what they're doing so i don't it's it's insane that he doesn't realize this to this day but let's continue it was and it's like when people hate on cm punk i was like you wouldn't do it like you wouldn't jump to the front of the queue if they're offering you two million dollars to fight in the ufc like everyone would hate on cm punk and i, I was like oh, who gives a fuck like they're, they're giving the opportunity you wouldn't do it so for me i didn't realize the hate i'd get from other comics because of some of the opportunities that Paul, i got he gets a lot of hate now not sure yeah. different but it was just i <laughs> <laughs> i love that bit brian kind of mentions jay paul he's like yeah sure but different my hate is different my hate is special I'm the most hated one. I'm the I'm the most special hated one. <laughs> I love that. No, Jake Paul's hate is not as similar as mine. What? Jake Paul's more famous than you, though. How is his hate not worse than yours? Like, how does that make any sense? Jake Paul and Logan Paul have been hated since the inception of their YouTube career. They've their, their entire career, they've kind of built their entire maybe some of their fortune off of the back of how much some people hate them. Like, you know, like how can it not be comparable to you, <laughs> if not more than yours? No, I'm the I'm the special one. I'm the more hated. Fucking hilarious. I didn't expect that because in sports, like we support each other. Like fuck yeah. Like when when I knew Will had a athletic background, you did too. I'm like those are my guys. Mm -hmm. Like when any when any fighter gets in a podcast, I'm like, what can I do? How can I help you? Comedy's a little different. It's a little different because it's like a it's like a crab mentality a little bit. How does that make any sense? It's a crab mentality. How did you get your chance in? If comedy's different. The whole reason why people suck off Joe Rogan is because Rogan's got the biggest platform. He's maybe one of the most successful comedians out there. If you don't think he's good or not, it doesn't matter. But in terms of him selling out and doing big tours, he sells loads of tickets. He's obviously well regarded in his space. He's done it for many, many years. He's part of the store, blah, 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 blah. So clearly when Rogan says, hey, this guy's good, it can add to your, you know, it can add to your career prospects. It can kind of help you. So if Rogan helped you in that regard and all, all these other friends of Rogan then saw you and Rogan and thought, okay, if Rogan likes him, we're going to have him on also. 
that that obviously completely disapproves your narrative that the comedy scene isn't somehow collaborative and doesn't doesn't somehow try and help you out. That doesn't make any sense because how did you get your career? How did you get handed the opportunity? Makes any sense? You know what I mean, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, it doesn't. And I didn't expect that. Cause I'm, I'm, and also, like when the pandemic hit, and you know, some some of our buddies got canceled, stuff like that. I'm like, rally the troops, boys. Let's rally up. Let's right. fight against them. Where's everybody? Yeah. The fuck are we doing? Where's the boys at? <laughs> like, no, that's you, how we work. You can see right. one time. That's how we operate. Yeah. It's well, tough. When- to- so that's a redacted opinion too, because maybe he's in his right to say, hey. I thought it'd be more collaborative and more helpful and whatever is kind of crabs in a barrel mentality. I don't agree with that. I think it's fucking insane to say that because he was given special privileges because he's friends with Rogan. So that allowed him to be in the cool guys group of people that kind of needed you and the kind of clout exchange, come on my pod, you scratch my back, I scratch yours type of thing. He kind of benefited a lot from the residual love that he kind of got from Joe Rogan. So that whole idea is dumb. But, 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 this point he makes about none of his friends backing him when they got cancelled is insane because to expect other grown men to put the, their careers and the futures of their family on the line for Chris D'Elia and Brian Callan is legitimately insane. Forget what you might know about them, whatever. Just them as people or just, no, forget that. Just them as, as just the allegations alone. To put your career on the line for Brian Callum being accused of rape and for Chris D'Elia being accused of what he got accused of is insane for them to expect people were going to do that. The reason why I say that is because they didn't even do it for each other. They didn't even do it for Chris. Chris D'Elia got cancelled and instead of them defending him on their pot, again, what he did is that what he's accused of is abhorrent, obviously. And most likely, he did that shit, right? Let's be honest, right? The guy looks a bit like a creep. He plays one on TV. You know, he says some sussy stuff. The documentary's out there about him. One million views now. Big up the guy that did that. We probably think it's true. But if you're his friend, in my opinion, if you're his friend and you are anti-council culture and you're for the Rat Pack, get on your podcast and defend the guy. They go on his podcast and start crying. They start making it about them. Somehow they were the victim in this. They started fucking crying. Brendan was having snot coming out of his fucking nose. I can't talk. Pushing the microwave from his face. Distraught. Crying more on fucking camera about Chris D'Elia getting counselled for diddling underage kids, right? And having a cult of women around the country sending him nudes and tattoos and shit. He cried more about that than his fucking mother-in-law's, no, than his grandmother-in-law passing away. He cried more about that than allegedly his wife having a miscarriage on fucking on his podcast. And Brian sat next to him and threw Chris Lee under the bus. Under the bus, sorry. We're not friends. We don't really hang out. I don't really know this guy. Blah, 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 blah. So you speak about all this shit. You want your friends to back up, to back you up. But you don't even back up your own friends on your podcast. So that can get fucked. First point out of the way. Then Brian tries to throw Chris under the bus. Then as Karma would have it, a couple of weeks later, he then gets cancelled for, I think, maybe a comparable, if not far greater crime, rape, right? <laughs> Allegedly. And Brian then says, oh, I'm going to get on the fire and keep... Remember, he, Brian made that post. Um, we're going to have an emergency broadcast. I'm going to clear the air next day. And then Brian, Brendan clearly put the kabush on it. He said, no, 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 you're not doing that. Brian, Brendan, ac- Brendan either called it off or the brands and the advertisers said, if Brian gets on that pod, we're going to pull all ads and your guys are going to be broke. One way or the other, Brendan's fucking anti-council culture, fight against it, rally the troops. He didn't even rally the troops for his own friend, Brian Callan, his own co-host, who in part gave him a career along with fucking Rogan. So all this stuff is mute. You say all this stuff about the community not coming around each other, but you didn't even back up your own friend on your own pod. You sat there and cried, made it about yourself. And then Brian, when it happened to him, you didn't sit on a podcast and defend him and say he didn't do it. You just put him on ice, you know, for for a year and then brought it back and nothing happened. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on now. Let's be fair. So I think all that is fucking bullshit. It's fucking horrendous, really. 
Um, and again, like I said, I, I just think it's insane to say that there's no community and they don't help each other out when essentially Brendan's whole career is like charity. If Rogan didn't feel bad about telling him to quit, you because that's my theory, Rogan felt ultimately really bad because he told Brendan to quit the UFC and he kind of made a promise to himself that he would go out of his way to help him to get on his feet so he doesn't never need to go and fight again. And I think that's why Brendan then ended up having the most appearances of the Joe Rogan experience because Rogan wanted to make sure that he never had to go back to fighting and he also felt bad and wanted to give him an opportunity to keep like, to make like a long-term career for himself. He had every opportunity given to him on a silver fucking platter and he fucked it up. He got to a point where now everybody's ostracized, run away from him. No one comes on his show from that comedy pack, really, you know. No Tom Segura's on there. Burt came on recently, but Theo hasn't been back since he left. Um, you know, Burt came back a few times, but he, again, he's a bit of a fame horse, so he would obviously go in anywhere that would invite him with a microphone. But all the other guys have kind of left him to a side. Andrew Santino doesn't really talk to them. All those kind of... Two, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's bullshit, personally. What do you guys think in the chat? Um, I got doing the scripted clip moment. Uh, I feel like Papo is stuck with his crew just waiting for aggregations against <laughs> Lols. Uh, Papo cried because he ate the Mexicans cookie dipped in salsa. Asad says, LMO, he, they cried about Chris and then kicked Brian off the show. Fight the fight the hood. Fight, exactly. Fight the good fight, Brian. Exactly. Exactly. Alpha brain pills turning Papo into a better now. Exactly. Uh, good Rebel says it's a very difficult situation. Um, Asad Asis says unleashing the papa is a sin Joe Rogan will never be able to wipe away now I still don't blame Rogan I still don't think it's Rogan's fault for helping out a friend I think if I had a platform like Rogan's and I had a friend like Brendan I'd probably do the same thing I don't think it's a bad thing I just think I think Rogan has like it's clear Rogan has certain friends in his social group that he probably doesn't even aware of that just use him I'm sure, even though he thinks he, he's like a, you know, I'm a, I've am got my really good bullshit detector. I don't think Rogan's bullshit detector is all the way there. I think there's certain friends that he has that clearly just use him because of his fame and his notoriety. But I also think there are people that he's given opportunities to who don't deserve them. And Brendan might be one of them, to be honest. Because the way he fucked it up over the years has been pretty incredible to see. Pretty incredible how he single-handedly has fucked up every opportunity he's got. And think about it, think, think about it this way. Brendan was on E. There was one point where Brendan was on E. Brendan was doing fucking red carpets for like award shows and shit, commentary. Brendan had like a, a TV show on Showtime below the belt. Uh, <laughs> Brendan did a lot of things like over his career uh, based on the relationship he's had with Rogan, his popularity of the fight and the kid, and he just fucked it. All of it. Every opportunity given to him on a silver platter, he's fucked it. And now you're trying to blame what council culture? You're trying to say that your friend should have helped you out more. Like what? Okay, cool, cool, man. Uh, what are you guys saying here? He talked shit about every other comedian fighter podcast. I can help exactly, exactly. John, um, John Siri here exactly. Oh yeah, big up John, big up my guy, man, big up. Nice to see you, my friend. Um, yeah, exactly. That's a good part of it. Um. <laughs> that's also something he says that's like a it's like a default thing people say to kind of appear like it's like a what's another podcast thing they say i hate everything i do um what's another thing to say um they, they they have these things they say these sayings they just say they're just empty they don't mean anything like oh yeah you know anytime i hear someone do something i'm always like yeah how can i help how can i help it's like a like you're just selfless you know, fucking saint of a person. Shut up. You know you're not. Like, stop chatting shit. Um, blame it on Rogan, Delia, the Delia Vanilla. Uh, love it, Ago, but some sun's coming up. Go for a run or go to bed. Yeah, yeah, Sue's coming. I've got a few more minutes, my friend, and I'm going. Um, Coyler says, Mike Baker just goes on Rogan and talks about <laughs> how the cow ate the cabbage. <laughs> Yo, yo, you're fucking insane. Koilo is funny, guy. I swear to God. The way you just, the way you just, the way you just summed up Mike Baker's career on there. Oh, he's full of so much shit, but I, anyway, I don't know. I'm not going to get into Mike, ba Mike Baker slander, but that guy is so full of shit, man. Um, 
Yeah, Zaki Asada. He says, Rogan's whole BS detector is laughable. He sat there and listened to that North Korean girl. <laughs> yeah, what's the name? Yomi something, right? Yomi Park with the big with the big hitters, yeah. I, I, it actually bummed me out that, that she would lie so much, to be fair. I'm not, I'm not, I don't doubt her stories were true, but it just didn't happen to her. I'm sure there are accounts she's heard from other people, but the fact that she just lied about her upbringing, everything, it's just fucking incredible, man. And that she's actually from a somewhat, you know, noble family over there and stuff is hilarious. And I think the, the, was it the current saying is that her dad was involved in some sort of like corruption. That's why they actually got booted out of North Korea. That's why they had to leave North Korea, basically. Her parents were involved in some, like, siphoning of government funds or something. And they got found out. It wasn't... I mean, that's basically... I think something along those kind of lines. <laughs> oh, big up Yomi Park, man. She's up there with Brendan Shaw with the lies. Unfortunately. <laughs> 